Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. So when does a question, a simple ask that someone presents to you, when does that become an instant connection to a feeling of you're not enough? Have you had this experience? When someone asks you something, it could be so simple, so simple, but you're at a point energetically where inside you've already had just about enough of energy, the demands of life, the multiple requests upon you, the things that you've been thinking over and over and over again, which by the way, your brain is the one that is probably the worst culprit here that is putting more and more and more demands and requests upon you. That when someone asks you a simple question, and they use the word, please, you go off, you're triggered, you jump off into the deep end. And instead of just recognizing that you're angry and overwhelmed or stressed, what's really under that, that pool that you just jumped off the deep end into, that's not enough. Oh, 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 I bet you don't recognize it as that. Me either. I did not recognize that. I did not realize that when I was triggered, when I was triggered, and I do get, this is a constant thing for me, energetically as an empath, when I get overwhelmed, when I'm already thinking overwhelming thoughts, (laughs) and I read an email that says, please, please do this for me. Or one of my kids comes in and says, hey, mom, I need this, that, and the other thing for school. Can you go do that? You have to do it online, you know. And it's like they need it that day or the next day, and I'm like right in the middle of uploading some videos, and maybe my technology is not working great, or maybe my microphone was fuzzy, and I'm frustrated, or I'm trying to design a graphic or an outline for a class or something, right? It's like, what? You know, (laughs) what is happening here? A simple question spins you into a place of feeling out of control. And that out of control energy is because of, it shows up like um, we blame stress, we blame overwhelm, we blame I'm an empath. We have all these like reasons slash excuses for why we feel the way we feel. Instead of worrying about all the excuses or the reasons or blaming our feelings on something, why don't we just take a step back collectively, you and I together, like, let's practice this in our day to day lives. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking some of our relationships could improve, especially that relationship with ourselves. So let's take a step back, take a nice breath in. And let's exhale. And let's just let our feelings feel. Let's let emotion do what it does best, and that is motion, movement, flow. Emotions are not something that we're supposed to be battling. This isn't a video game where the emotions are coming in and we have to slay the dragons of emotions. Oh, no, no, no. We have been misinformed with that. Then I think probably the reason is over time in a patterning with consistent repeating reoccurring patterns of being asked for stuff or maybe asked a question like even in school, even in like elementary school or junior high being asked a question that we didn't know the answer to and feeling inadequate, feeling stupid, feeling dumb, feeling less than not smart. Therefore, not enough right? When the question itself was just designed to help us learn, to grow, to step back, create some room to see some bigger patterns so that we can kind of understand how things fit together to form an answer, to form a response, to reform, to, to form some knowledge or wisdom for us. So that's the same kind of thing that's going on with the emotions, We just have to step back, literally step back. When we start to feel that surge, we recognize that we're like, whoa, 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 she's going to blow, she's going to blow. It's like beyond 
I can't stop this freight train. It's a moving kind of energy, right? But you can certainly allow the emotions to be seen, to be revealed. Now, I know we've spent our lifetimes learning how to ignore the emotions and stuff them and hide them and make them our fault, our problem. And maybe if we just recognize that all the resistance and the blocks and the barriers that we have in our lives to all the great things we're trying to accomplish, your goals, whether they be your life goals, your your relationship goals, your health goals, your positive attitude goals, because let's be honest, we all have got to have some of those right now, let's just say. No matter what those goals are, that resistance is because, is because it's been built up upon experience after experience after experience and where we've created a pattern of blockage, blocking our emotions. Emotions are meant to flow. And when they're not, there's a big old dam there. And how can you expect good stuff to get through the dam? Emotions are emotions. They're just feelings. They're not supposed to be good or bad, but we are judged that way as a good feeling or a bad feeling. They're all supposed to be express expressions of ourselves, information for ourselves, right? To help us understand. They're just a depth of learning, in response to a question, a query. And that question or a query might be coming from ourselves. It might be coming from our own thoughts. And we know, you and I both know that questions inside of ourselves, those reoccurring, unending questions that we ask ourselves over and over and over that don't have answers or that have answers that we don't like, we're just beating ourselves up with those same damn questions. And that's part of what creates this trigger point. So the resistance is really the dam of energy that we've created to protect ourselves from feeling. And guess what? You're protecting yourself against feeling the great stuff just as much as you are the bad stuff. Oh, sure, every once in a while, some joy ekes in through the cracks and you can see someone else's happy smile and joyful experience on their wedding day or on the birth of their child or and something really wonderful or exciting that just happened to them. And you're just so, you can just feel that. You can feel that joy. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be better if you could be feeling that resourced inside of yourself? Mm-hmm. Now, I don't expect this to be easy and just be like all of our problems resolved overnight because we start feeling, but we got to start allowing some kind of movement or flow if we expect any kind of progress, don't we? Don't we now? And if indeed it's true, which I believe that all of you as well as myself are empaths, which means that's how we connect you guys. That's how we communicate. That's why you are listening to this audio by some lady named Bridget because we feel the same vibrational energy through that channeling of the heart space, which is empathy, that empathic energy channel, which by the way, if you ever try to connect with the afterlife, that is their number, the heart space, the feeling and the emotional space. We are so afraid of our feelings because we're afraid of being overwhelmed, overtaken by them and swept off into the deep abyss of depression where we just can't function ever and then we get really sick and we can't live our lives. Those kinds of worst case scenarios or gloom and doom thoughts are exactly why we need to feel our energy and allow ourselves to have at the very bare bones, we need to have safe communications within ourselves with our mind and our heart and our spirit and, the, and our beautiful bodies And we really don't, you guys. We're not good at that. I know. I suck at that. So how about the next time we feel like we're asked for one more thing? You know, when you're running into your next Zoom meeting and your kid asks for lunch? Um, Excuse me. Number one, can't you make that sandwich yourself? I think so. In fact, I've been kind of funny about it lately. I'm like, oh, I believe in you. I know you can do this. I know you can. I believe in you. I have lots of faith in you. You are so capable. And like I do the whole life coach coach motivational thing, and they usually just roll their eyes and goes, yeah, okay, whatever, mom. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm like, yep, I believe in you. I believe. <laughs> That's funny. But it's true. So thanks, you guys, for this Sunday morning podcast, Sunday morning coffee podcast episode, because it helps me put into perspective when someone asks me for something, they have no idea of other people have no idea what you're already dealing with. And they have no idea, like they're just reaching out, like an ask, an inquiry, a question. It's just that. It's just a question. It's not a big poker trying to jab you in the side. It's not something that is trying to be a big flashing arrow sign saying, hey, look at how you're not enough. 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 And if you'd actually felt with, if you actually were willing to work with your emotions, you just might realize how much enough, enough, enough you certainly are (laughs) because you are. So let's, let's agree you and I right now to the next time we feel that like really pressure point, like over, I'm overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, one more thing, just one more thing. Really, the boss asks you to do one more thing or the kid has one more assignment and you're like, really? It's like seven o'clock at night and you're asking me this now and I just want to like chill. <laughs> okay, it's been a long day. When you're at that point, promise me, okay? And I'm going to do it too when I'm reading my emails or my comments on YouTube because that's usually when I feel it. Let me just say, that's when I feel it. Like, well, Bridget, why aren't you doing this? Or why can't you do that? Or, oh, this is, you have a typo on this page. I'm like, really? Okay, well, let's just step back and recognize that the people who are asking are not really the problem. Really. I mean, I know it's hard to believe because sometimes it feels like the boss might be the problem. (laughs) But let's just admit that that one person or one thing in our lives, there's no way they could have that much power over every single thing that there's a part of us in our mind that totally agrees with that. Whatever they're asking, we're jumping to the end conclusion that is, I'm not enough, I'm not enough. And so, but I want you to agree with me. Okay, let's make a deal, right? You and I both, the next time we start to feel like that, let's agree to at least take a step back, like even physically, like stand up, take a step back or slide your chair back. Even if you're in a meeting, slide your chair back, take a breath through your nose and exhale your mouth. It doesn't have to be a huge like exhale either. It doesn't have to be obvious, you guys, especially if you're in a meeting or something. It can be subtle. (laughs) Try not to roll your eyes, okay, when you're doing this. (laughs) Focus on the breath. So inhale and exhale, just create some space. And when you do that, you're activating the energy of your heart center. You're allowing your lungs to expand and contract and you're increasing the flow of that life source energy of breath into the body. And that will help emotions to flow. That will help you feel a little bit more free and loosened up. And then you can start to work on those dams dams of resistance that you and I both have. We know it. We know it. And that underlying tone of the overwhelm is all about, I'm just not enough. I'm not good enough. So why am I even going to try? And you know that's true. You know it is. You know it is. So awareness is the first step, right? So now that we've talked about this, we've got it out in the open, hopefully... Just by being aware of it, you can start to recognize the power you do have and then work on the flow of energy, just allowing your emotions to be present. And then recognize too, one of the really key things that we've talked about here is the mind and that your mind is all in. So when you get a request that you can't like instantly fulfill and success and achieve, your mind is all in going, okay, yeah, remember we've told you this so many times. You need to be prepared. You need to do this. You need to do that. Your mind is beating you up and and pushing the emotion down, down, down because the emotions, the power of your heart is really strong and it could totally dominate the brain. And the brain doesn't like that because it doesn't like to share that kind of power. Let's start working together inside body, mind, heart, and soul. Mind, heart, soul, and body. Let's do that, you guys. Come on. The next time somebody asks for something, Remember, it's really not about them. It's not even about what they're asking. It's really about how you feel about what's going on and how it's adding to 
what's already there that you're resisting, that you're refusing to deal with or acknowledge. And by the way, when I say deal with, I don't mean stuff, hide, resist. I mean, step back, take a breath, breathe, give some room, just acknowledge. If you even need to, you're like one of those people like, put your hand on your heart, do that if you need to, and just say, okay, all right, I'm just going to let my feelings be felt. This is not that big a deal. It's not about the question they're asking. It's not how they asked it. It's not. Your mind's going to say, well, it's how they asked it. No, no, it's not. That's not true. (laughs) You're triggered because of the pattern you have, and it's related to the emotions that you haven't felt, that you don't want to feel. All right? Just create some room for the energy of them. I'm not suggesting you go deep and wallow in the emotion right there that moment in that meeting after that email, when your child is asking you for something, I'm not suggesting you do it then. I'm suggesting you simply acknowledge that the emotion deserves to have some space to flow. (sighs) So you give it that. You just give it energy. You address the energy. You can address the energy right there, right there in that instant, in that moment by creating some space for it to be in coexistence with you. You don't have to fight it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to deal with it right then and there. You could just give it some space, give it some room. So, so promise me now you're going to try that. I'm going to try to listen to my own medicine because I'm going to be needing that a lot lately, especially as I'm going through some old content, some of my old material and content, one of my old blogs I have to resurrect. And uh, I know, I know as I do it, you guys, I'm speaking to you right now and I know as I'm going to do it, like I'm so not looking forward to it because... I know that there are going to be links that are broken and things like that. And it's hundreds of posts, okay? And I'm not going to go through every post and fix everything. And I know I'm going to get (laughs) emails about it because I don't, why don't you do this? And I need that. And I'm like, wait, wait, no, 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 no. It's free. (laughs) So I get to choose too how I feel, how I respond, <laughs> yeah, so I need this tool right now, right here, right now, as much as you do. All right. So this is Bridget. Thank you so much for being here on the Sunday morning coffee episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I really appreciate you guys being here and uh, in this kind of format, the podcast. I love it. I feel like I'm just chatting with my friends, having some coffee. In fact, I'm just going to get up and go make my coffee because let me tell you, it's going to be a busy day. It's going to be a great day. I am going to let my feelings and emotions flow energetically. That doesn't mean I'm going to feel them deep and intense and be derailed by them, but I am going to have my handy dandy journal available to me. When stuff pops up, I can write it down and set it aside so I don't have to be overwhelmed in the moment because I have control by my choices, just like you. All right. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you have a great day.